So when it comes to all of the stuff that happened between Johnny Depp and a specific nameless party, that nameless party's friends, they have been integral in providing a narrative that Depp had a long time, long struggle shaking. One of those people that really, really went after him was I.O. Tillett Wright. And this is one of the articles they wrote about what exactly transpired back in May of 2016. Now, why exactly is this relevant? Well, because the media picked up on this, and for years they let this roll out there, despite the fact that you could disprove so much of this stuff. So what you and I are going to do today is we're going to look at this article, and yeah, it's going to be an interesting read indeed. So hey there, and ho, 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 Santa Umbrella is bringing you a really, really early Christmas present to stick under the tree. Wait, it's on fire? Never mind, don't stick it under the tree. But yeah. You get what I mean. Before we get there, I'm putting this in every video too because I don't accept sponsors and well, this platform is not being friendly lately. We have a comic book coming out May the 15th, 2020. Another case for the Littlest Umbrella. I'll talk about that at the end of the video, but we have a sign up link in the description. Sign up and if you want to back that, you'll get an exclusive card for free with purchase. This is the only way to do it. So make sure that you sign up before the 15th. Thank you. So that name, I.O. Tillett Wright. Do you recognize it? Because I wouldn't unless I was looking at all of this stuff. This is one of the best friends of a certain nameless party, and they've been involved in almost everything from the thing that they called quote-unquote Poop gate, you know where? Well, we know what somebody left on Johnny Depp's bed to calling 911. This is the person that did it and then came up with about three narratives that basically gave them a pass for inconsistent stories. Now, in this, they describe quite a bit, too. And I'm just going to read it to you. I'll stop here and there. But I want you to look at how they frame it and how this is pretty much par for the course for that time period. The media, they ate stuff like this up. So I called 911 because she never would. Because every time it happened, her first thought was about protecting him. Because every time it happened, that sweet, loving man we all cared for so much, we come back with apologies, profuse, swearing up and down that he understood how bad what he had done was, and swearing never to do it again. We all loved him, but especially, especially her, and she wanted to believe that the behavior wasn't going to last. The reports of violence started with a kick on the private plane, then it was shoves and the occasional punch, until finally, in December, she described, an owl out assault where she woke up with a pillow covered in blood. She woke up. How do you wake up with that, huh? I know this because I went to their house. That's a big one. You see, they're involved here. I saw the pillow with my own eyes. I saw the busted lip and the clumps of hair on the floor. I got the phone call immediately after it happened, her screaming and crying, a stoic woman reduced to sobs. I understand her heartbreak. Now this here, they're talking about something, again, that is easily disprovable because the person that supposedly did this to them did it on the day before they went on a show that show is on youtube and that busted lip and everything else yeah it doesn't exist but hey you know again i saw it because i went to their house he had been my friend too a person i loved very much a person i had once referred to as a brother a person with whom i had laughed at the absurdity of the media and their spicy claims about my role in their family a person who came to my rescue in my darkest hour, who I credited with saving my own life, who I lived for with for a year by his invitation while I healed and worked. So this person here, they say that he saved their life. He gave them free room and board, and this is how they paid them back. Isn't that absolutely insane? I knew him to be soft and gentle with a temper and a dark side, but a golden heart. I didn't want to believe it either until I saw the wreckage. When you call someone your brother, you also commit to calling them out when they are wrong. And she, shaking and crying, described this 190-pound man throwing his full weight of his body into the head bunning his 120-pound wife in a a fit of rage. Now, there was never any headbutt listed, but this narrative is the same one that a certain nameless party used, his weight versus her weight, because of course, you know, that that makes it so different. I find that unforgivable line in my heart had been crossed. 
I witnessed firsthand that absolutely baffling mental pretzel that an abused person puts themselves into, trying to balance their desire to protect their aggressor with the knowledge that their swollen face is unacceptable. I listened as she uh, put through things she could have possibly done to provoke it, or how she might have upset him enough to do this. Now, I always love the hit piece style article that these things represent. We say D. TV is bad, we condemn it, but as a culture, we create the most fertile breeding ground for it to thrive. You know what we create culturally to thrive these days? False accusations. We have made it basically where a person, they can say anything they want. They can go out, they can create articles, and they can do anything in the name of. They can harass you, they can harass families, they can do anything they want, because of course they're in the right, therefore. Continuing, I sat and I listened, my own heart aching because I had so much care for the tender, generous man inside all of this rage. And yet, the bottom unequivocal line is, nothing she ever could have said or done describes what she describes as him dragging her up the stairs by her hair, punching her in the back of the head, choking her until she almost passed out, and smashing his forehead into her nose until it almost broke. Again, none of this stuff is in the new narratives, but you see what was out there in 2016 being thrown out by quote-unquote third parties because Johnny Depp and the Nameless One, they could not discuss this stuff. If they did, it would violate all of the acts they had. They're lucky he didn't come after them. Now you see the quote they pulled out here. You can see it in that. We say DV is bad, so you've heard that one there. The cycle of abuse is perpetuated by every person who asserts that the victim most likely punched themselves rather than addressing the very real evidence that violence is in front of them. The culture of victim blaming is the very thing that protects abusers' abilities to get away with this type of behavior. This isn't victim blaming. You know, asking to see exactly what happened, talking about due process, that is is not victim blaming. (laughs) Continuing, right now, every battered woman in the world is watching this media circus, internalizing the message that when they come forward for help, when they break the cycle, they will be called a gold digger, a cheat, be accused of having faked it, all for attention. I'm looking at every journalist, every editor, every person who condemns a comment on an article pointing an uneducated finger. You are are a lynch mob. You know, you're a lynch mob now. You know, you question this stuff. You're a lynch mob. You're a deafening chorus. You're searching for an explanation for why he would have hit her sins. A very clear message that there can be a reason why someone hits their spouse. It doesn't matter what was said between the lovers. It doesn't matter if romance was coming to an end because nothing warrants that response. I wonder how they feel now with all the other stuff coming out about that nameless person. Was that was that warranted there? Did that actually happen? Are they doubting that? Or, you know, are we basically uh, listening to a lynch mob? But continuing on here, no person ever should suffer V at the hands of the person they love. I watched a uh, woman with a broken spirit go on national television the next night covered in makeup smiling through a bloodied lip who nearly jumped out of her seat when someone casually put their hand on her shoulder because she didn't know what was coming again they refer to that show telling you to watch it when the makeup person themselves tells you there was no makeup there that's why when it happened again when i was on the phone with both of them and heard it drop heard him say what if i pulled your hair back and heard her scream for my help i wonder like so many times before if i should break the code of silence that surrounds celebrities and invite police into the situation and in a, ple- in a split second decided that yes i was going to because i realized that I, as long as i was protecting the abuser from consequences i was enabling the abuse and i could no longer protect i had to stand up for my friend and for what I believe in the gut to be the code of conduct by which human beings have to behave with each other. Whether we loved him or not has nothing to do with it. When it comes to V, love is no longer part of the equation. There are many, many, 
many articles by this person, too. But this is what they put out after calling 911. They talk about a situation before. They talk about being on a phone and Depp saying, yo, I'm done with this. I'm done. I don't want to hear you talking about, quote unquote, poop gate. There's no reason that you folks should have done that. All of those things, yeah, that it is tar and feathery at its best. Now, what's amazing about the comments with this kind of stuff, too, is that the information you and I have talked about, it has been available since 2016. And yet the media, they have flagrantly chosen to ignore stuff. You can see it in the comments like this from June 14th, 2016. Are you kidding me? She reported, she described, you know, I heard him say that if pulled your hair back, back Back is in, she already had her, pulled her hair. Did you actually witness anything? No, you didn't, but two bodyguards did. They witnessed her scream, stop hitting me, while they were standing outside a room, only to rush in the room within seconds to find him nowhere near her. Police witnessed no signs of injury or crime. What did you witness? Reports and her uh, reactions, which in many opinions are pure fabrication, Or will you now say that the police are lying as well? And yes, they did indeed say that the police, they were indeed lying as well. Other people are like, hey, why don't you leave it to the courts? Why don't you go out and leave this stuff alone? But, you know, they keep asking this stuff. The people keep going in saying, what exactly did you see? Why exactly are you part of this? This person was supposed to be your friend, and yet you lambast them not knowing anything because, again, you chose one side over the other. Even though they allowed you to live for free in their homes, you credit them for saving you? Yeah, what kind of person are you indeed? I found this to be fascinating, like I said, especially knowing what's coming up now. And you can go and you can compare statements by Depp, statements by other people with this type of statement, how they put it together. And again, I did an entire video showcasing the entire fabrication of that. But anyway, I'm curious what you think. And this kind of stuff, that's what you keep tearing down. So closing, like I say, we have a comic book coming May 15, 2020. And you know, the reason that this stuff is important is because I don't accept sponsorships. You know, basically, if this platform says I can't cover what I just did, this is my way to circumvent that. And it's something that's important to me. There's a sign up for it. You know, if you plan on backing, you get an exclusive trading card with your purchase. And this, it's an all ages experience. Anyone can enjoy it. This is a conduit for a six year old to be able to enjoy comic books. But also, there is so much more there. I'll talk about it more in depth later, but thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me and listening to my spiel regardless. And thank you for your time. You make this stuff possible. We'll be here again soon. So again, thank you. I appreciate you.